Drug and other charges resulted from a traffic stop last night on the Mountain Parkway. The Kentucky State Police, assisted by deputies with the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department, also netted about a half pound in marijuana and something else that they've only seen in the parkway uh, and elsewhere on very few occasions, a relatively new type of marijuana, if you will. And it's also something that can go undetected to some degree. So also a word of warning for parents out there as well. But they found this as well as other items on three individuals uh, who were making their way through McGoffin County headed to Floyd last night. That half pound of marijuana is also in addition to what I'll show you was a, another pound of the illegal weed nabbed just days ago also in a traffic stop, a traffic safety checkpoint on the Mountain Parkway as well. It's not necessarily a new form of marijuana, but it's just a combination of that and the popular e-cigarette that's making it much more popular. I'll get into that in just a second and show you an example. Zach Haney with the Kentucky State Police, as well as Trooper Dustin Thompson and Brian Tipton, were patrolling the Mountain Parkway making traffic stops. This man was behind the wheel of a vehicle last evening when he had approached the traffic stop, and they noticed what they believed was something suspicious. They got the driver and the passenger out of the vehicle. The driver identified here as... 38-year-old Jody Carroll of Prestonsburg. From what I understand, after questioning the driver and the passenger, the passenger started acting nervous, and authorities noticed that his hands were shaking to the point that he was nervous to that degree. And they also saw a bulge in one of his pockets during a pat-down of the passenger. They found a container with marijuana, also some wax paper with a sticky substance on the wax paper in his pocket. Also, uh, they found another piece of waxy wax paper with the same substance on it in another pocket and then they began to question the driver who too had the same wax paper with the same substance on his person as well uh, admitted admittedly to officers uh, the individual said that it was a form of marijuana and that also upon questioning if there were any other legal drugs in the car they questioned a third passenger and that was uh, a gentleman as listed as Carl Potter, 29, of Prestonsburg, who was in the back seat of the vehicle. Their names are supposed to be on the screen and not. I apologize. Nevertheless, who admitted to a large amount of marijuana, which he had thrown behind the rear seat to the tune of about a half a pound of marijuana. Potter was charged with public intoxication, possession of marijuana, license not or license to be in possession. Other charges also against 23-year-old Sean Ratliff. He was charged with public intoxication, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, and as well as, I believe, failure to have his ID on his person as well. While the driver, 38-year-old Jody Carroll of Prestonsburg, uh, was charged with driving on a suspended license, failure to surrender his ID, DUI, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of a controlled substance or a drug unspecified, another charge of possession of drug paraphernalia and a prescription not in its original container. They were all lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center around 2.30 this morning. All three had bonded out by earlier this afternoon. This is the wax paper with the substance on it. Authorities tell me that were part of this investigation last night. They've only encountered this maybe three or four times on the road and each time I've been on the Mountain Parkway. It's basically just a very condensed version of marijuana or a portion of marijuana that gives you the high effect, the THC and other portions uh, of the weed. It's a very sticky substance, often seen on wax paper, so it can be removed. And it's used more often than not in the popular electronic cigarette and that's how it's being smoked uh, by a lot of people, young and older alike. And it's also said to be uh, very hard to be detected, very little odor, that in fact you have to be standing right on top of someone smoking it in order to detect it. And that was what authorities wanted us to pass along tonight to any parents or anyone who may encounter a substance as, such as this. Now, it's said to have a concentration, once again, dozens of times more potent than marijuana, and it's something that they say that they are seeing more often, especially combined with the popular e-cigarettes. So about a half pound of marijuana, what you're looking at here are two vacuum-sealed bags totaling about a pound of marijuana uh, that troopers, as well as uh, Haney and Trooper Thompson, as well as representatives of the Sheriff's Department, uh, seized off the Mountain Parkway in a separate traffic stop just a few days before last night. It was one pound, almost exactly vacuum sealed after another vehicle pulled up to a yet another traffic stop, uh, traffic safety checkpoint on the Mountain Parkway. And actually, in that case, they didn't have to become suspicious 
because they say when the driver pulled up, a portion of a bud of marijuana was actually just lying on the console where they had just smoked some of the weed before literally pulling up to the tr- to stop. There wasn't smoke coming out of the windows, I'm told, but definitely a strong odor. And then they found this marijuana inside the vehicle. I'll be right back. We've got more headlines. Stay tuned. For high-speed internet starting at 15 meg for all of your gaming, movie, home, and business solutions or to watch TV, including your favorite local channels without a contract with hundreds of channels and digital and HD quality and to stay connected 24-7 with friends and family, a direct line to 911 or to give your business the link it needs, choose telephone service you know is always there. Just click on their link on this site to find out how affordable the latest technology and communications can be. Foothills Communications. McGoffin County Sheriff's Office is handling an accident investigation into a pickup truck that careened off of Route 7 earlier this afternoon. The female trapped inside the vehicle was alert and conscious, actually smoking a cigarette while she was being extricated or about to be extricated from the vehicle. However, we've learned that she since became unconscious after arriving at the Paul B. Hall Medical Center. It was a single vehicle accident. After the 3 o'clock hour, close to 4 o'clock, I guess it was this afternoon, the vehicle was traveling in the direction of Sagersville on Route 7 in the Mason Stretch when the driver lost control. Witnesses who were doing construction, some construction work in the area uh, told authorities that it looked as though the vehicle was traveling down Route 7, dropped off the road, the driver overcorrected, and then uh, when the vehicle then left the roadway off to the right and over into the creek, the female driver was seen to be alert conscious and as I said smoking a cigarette uh, before being extricated from the vehicle by the McGoffin County Rescue Squad. She was placed in a Stokes basket before being retrieved out of the creek and then back up to the roadway uh, where she was later transported by ambulance to the Paul B. Hall Medical Center. We have since learned that even though the female driver was alert and conscious and responding to authorities uh, and EMS at the scene that she became unresponsive once arriving at the hospital. We have also confirmed that the Sheriff's Department, specifically investigating officer Jonathan Holbrook, discovered a few empty Suboxone packages which may have been uh, emptied while the truck was actually uh, in the creek. He said that was still under investigation, but a part of the investigation, and they were trying to determine if that may have been the reason that the driver was unconscious after arriving at the hospital. As of airtime, no charges had been filed. Now let's go on to our McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. A lot of new things happening there. First off, a birthday wish. Ta-da. Happy birthday, Stevie Joe, it says. A lot of love for mom, dad, family, and friends. Papa, I think, too. Happy birthday, Stevie Joe. This announcement specifically for girls in the third through the sixth grades. The McGoffin County Lady Hornets basketball team is hosting a basketball clinic this Saturday in the McGoffin County High School Gymnasium. It's all girls, third through sixth grades, who are invited to attend. We'll be working on drills with focus on dribbling, passing, and shooting. If you have a basketball, please bring it with you, too. They don't think they'll have enough for everyone. But registration does begin Saturday at 1.30 with the clinic starting promptly at 2 o'clock and ending at 5. It's $10 per participant, and they encourage any girl interested in playing basketball to attend. And the McGoffin County High School Lady Hornets will be doing a short demonstration of skills with those who participate during Maroon and White Night. And by the way, that's set for November the 18th. I've got a boil water advisory in effect from the Sagersville Waterworks. Now, it's a specific area from Dairy Queen to Cash Express. That's just not all that far. Cash Express, I believe, just up there at the other end of that plaza, if you will. But it also includes all the residents on Lick Branch as well. So a significant number of water customers who need to boil their drinking or cooking water for three minutes until further notice from the Sagersville Waterworks. DQ to Cash Express, including Lick Branch. A reminder about the Homemaker Scholarship Fundraiser. It's a big soup bean dinner this Friday beginning at 10 at the McGoffin County Extension Service. Call 349-3216 to place your order for delivery or come in and dine at the Extension Office. Yes, I said delivery. A reminder about the Path to Destiny at the New Life Worship Center this Saturday morning at 10 with guest speaker Margie Tanner, who says that, ladies, this will be a refreshing time of worship, inspiration, and fellowship, and she hopes to see all the ladies there for a women's conference at New Life Worship Center Saturday at 10. 
This Saturday is also the Elk Creek Fuel Baptist Fall Open Bass Fishing Tournament. 1000 bucks for first place, 500 for second. Other big cash prizes. They'll blast off the Paintsville, Marine, Paintsville Lake Marina boat ramp at 7 o'clock this Saturday morning. You can register that morning earlier or by calling that number on the bottom of your screen, 743-2211. And call us if you've got a birthday or other calendar announcement for any group or organization or nonprofit. It's free. We'll tell everyone about it. All you have to do is get the announcement to us this way or the other way, any way in front of you or by dropping it off here at the station. And lastly, from the McGoffa County Funeral Home, Funeral Services, tonight with a listing in honor of 71-year-old Mary Watson, Mary Ruth Patrick Watson of Short Street, who passed away this week. Received in death by her husband, Russell Watson Sr. She survived by sons, Russell and Matthew Watson. Visitation is this evening, all day tomorrow, and up until services begin Friday in her honor with all visitation and services from the Salyersville Funeral Home. Burial follows at the Reed Watson Cemetery at Elsie. 